newsletters, and other publications. Primary literature represents the most current resource for information and includes clinical trials, case studies, and other original research published in biomedical journals. Manufacturers' monographs fall into this category as they may have information not published elsewhere, such as toxicologic information. Primary literature provides details of methodology and scientific results that lead to therapeutic conclusions. Users are therefore able to critically evaluate the research to determine whether the conclusions are sound and based on the work presented. Tertiary and secondary resources, on the other hand, consist of a review of published primary literature and may be biased or inaccurate depending upon the expertise of the authors or editors. It is possible to formulate therapeutic conclusions that are different than that represented in the tertiary or secondary literature after evaluating the primary literature. Other resources include local and national professional organizations such as the Canadian Diabetes Association or the BC Cancer Agency, manufacturers, drug information and poison control centers, experts in the field, including yourself, and other internet resources such as search engines, list servers, and Usenet groups. A word of caution, there exists as much, if not more, incredible information as there is credible information on the internet, so you must be diligent to evaluate any web source. As well, Manufacturers and experts may introduce their own biases into the information they provide to you. A general to specific approach is the most efficient way for searching drug information resources. However, a search may not require the use of all three types of resources. Simple questions such as identification or availability of a drug or dosage form can be easily located in tertiary references without going further. On the other hand, if more in-depth or specific information is needed, like for confirmation of a possible adverse drug reaction not previously mentioned, then a further search of secondary and primary sources is necessary. Through experience, you become more familiar with the resources, know where and how to use them, and become more efficient at the drug information search process. How do the various types of resources compare? There are advantages and disadvantages to each type of resource. Tertiary resources try and provide a concise review of the literature by an acknowledged expert in the field. However, they may contain information already several years old because of publishing lag time and topics may have insufficient detail due to space limitations or author bias. Secondary resources provide a means of conveniently searching a multitude of primary literature in a relatively short amount of time. In order to do this efficiently, though, you need to have the skills for using online indexing services such as Medline or Embase. You must also keep in mind that secondary resources do not provide interpretation of search results, nor do they ensure that the abstract reflects the actual article. Primary resources have the advantage of providing the most current information that is often reviewed by peers. However, they may be too narrow in scope. They often require an indexing service to be able to locate relevant articles in a timely manner, and they require the reader to interpret them in order to determine the clinical significance. At this step of the modified systematic approach, the information retrieved must be objectively critiqued. In order for the response to be pertinent and useful to the requester, the analysis and synthesis should be done taking into consideration the background information previously obtained. You will use various levels of literature during the next week. Some information will be easier to evaluate than others depending on your background and knowledge of the subject. The objectives of the rotation will include evaluating tertiary literature and the internet and an introduction to evaluating primary literature. We do not expect you to become experts in such a short time. The following are some things to keep in mind when evaluating tertiary resources. Credentials of the authors or editors. Are they experts in the subject matter? Have they authored similar titles? Is the publisher well recognized in the medical literature community? Do they have a number of other texts that they are responsible for? Does the textbook have some form of peer review such as editorial board? Is the copyright date recent? What is the scope of the reference? Are there many topics covered superficially or only a handful in great detail? Is the textbook easy to use? Is a table of contents useful at a glance? 
Is the index comprehensive? Is the textbook referenced and are they included? Are they current? Many secondary resources are available online or in CD-ROM format. Things to consider when accessing these databases include the following. What subjects does the database cover? Pharmacy-related, medical fields, science and research? How large is the database and what input sources does it include? Does it only include AIM journals or does it include meeting abstracts, conference proceedings, etc.? AIM journals are core clinical medical journals indexed for abridged index medicus. They are available in most medium-sized hospital or medical center libraries. Currently, there are more than 100 journals being indexed and include such titles as the New England Journal of Medicine, Annals of Internal Medicine, the British Medical Journal, and the Canadian Medical Association Journal. What fields in a citation are searchable? The title, author, abstract? Does it include abstracts for all citations or only some? What are the years of coverage? Does the database go back far enough to include early research and is the lag time short enough to include more current journal articles? How often is it updated by the vendor or supplier? How easy is it to use? Does it allow the user enough customization of searches? How much overlap of information does it have with other secondary resources? Skills and literature evaluation allow pharmacists to efficiently and effectively determine which new treatment options represent therapeutic advances and which lack the potential to improve patient care or perhaps may even be harmful. One cannot assume that only high quality information that has met the standards for publication appear in the literature. Even if the primary literature is considered of high quality with flawless methodology, an evaluation is necessary to determine whether the conditions of the study were similar to those routinely encountered in clinical practice and that any statistically significant result is also clinically significant as well. The reality is that as much as 40 to 50 percent of published articles in the medical and pharmacy literature have significant problems with design, statistical analysis, and conclusions. You must apply healthy skepticism and keep in mind that no study is perfect. Literature evaluation is simply the art of determining which flaws are acceptable and which invalidate a study's results and conclusions. A good starting point is to look at the consort statement. CONSORT stands for Consolidated Standards of Reporting Trials. It provides a checklist of information that should be included in clinical trial reports and recommends the use of a diagram to illustrate the flow of the study. Many journals have endorsed the CONSORT guidelines including Annals of Internal Medicine, BMJ, Canadian Medical Association Journal, Journal of Postgraduate Medicine, Journal of the American Medical Association, The Lancet, and the New England Journal of Medicine. During the DPIC DI rotation, you will have an opportunity to increase your proficiency in literature evaluation. Finally, after the search and evaluation, you must make a decision or formulate a response taking into consideration the patient, evidence, what is the strength of the literature, evidence-based medicine, randomized controlled trials, cohort case control case series, or your Aunt Betty's opinion, expertise, yours or somebody else's knowledge, the requirements